and welcome to RACOS Forum. Uh, uh, today we are going to discuss excellence uh, in the region of York, uh, both in uh, school but also in sports and uh, I have some guests uh, and some players that we will be speaking with but presently uh, Stephen Pollack uh, who is the owner of uh, Everest Academy uh, is here with us and so is Jeff who is the director of hockey uh, at the Everest uh, Academy. Uh, gentlemen, uh, speak to me or to us about what you are offering to our kids in the community to make sure that they will do as well as they can, both in sports and education. Okay, uh, absolutely. First of all, thank you for uh, having us on the show. Uh, so Everest Academy is a private school in the region. We're uh, based out of what used to be called the Pavilion uh, Fitness Facility uh, at uh, Dufferin in the 407. And our main focus is to find kids who are very focused on athletics in their life and are trying to provide a way for them to achieve better in academics than the typical program would allow. Uh, the normal athletes really, really busy with their interests from grades 1 all the way through to grade 12 and often school suffers as a result and a lot of what we've formed in our program is to make it possible for those kids to be successful in academics. So that's what we do at the school. Uh, all of our students sort of fit that type of uh, model. It's a place to go when you really have a focus on trying to improve as a sports person. And which kind of sports uh, normally you are offering? Uh so we have uh, sort of two ways to answer that question. We have five core sports that we provide the training for at the school. Uh, hockey is our biggest, which is related to the facility. Uh, we also have a, a baseball program, a lacrosse program, uh, soccer, and uh, golf. Uh, mm -hmm. And for very young kids, we have what we call an all sports program. You can see on the screen there yes. some of our hockey players and baseball and players. Baseball there, yes. Uh, but we also provide the flexible academics for people who might be doing their sports training outside the school environment. So they can come to Everest to have a much more flexible way of dealing with their academic needs. Good. And, uh, but which sport, if you have to choose one among what you're offering, where is, where there is more interest presently? Uh, probably the hockey program would be the place where there's the biggest interest and part of it is the facility. We have two rinks as part mm -hmm. of our school uh, facility uh, and lacrosse would be probably the second. The second one. And uh, who do we have in hockey? <laughs> We actually uh, just had nine players drafted in the OHL uh, draft, which just happened uh, about a month ago. Oh. Um, and we have over 90 kids in the varsity program as well as a prep team. So there's a lot of uh, great players and young players all the way from uh, grade one all the way up to grade 12. Those nine that you made reference to, what, what is their age? Uh, they would be just finishing minor midget, which would be 16, 16 years old. Wow. So they are, they're starting. And uh, so their, their future uh, would naturally potentially be in the big league at the end of the day. Is that, uh, I think that's, that's their, a real that's possibility? Their end, goal, yeah. their end goal would be to get there someday. Wonderful. And what, who, those kids attending your school, uh, yes, it is in Thornhill, it is in Bonn, uh, but are the kids from that, this area or they are from all over? Uh, they're from all over, mostly because, again, the specialty program we provide attracts them from all over. But we do have quite a large portion that will be from the local local community, especially the younger kids. The older kids can travel, younger mm -hmm. kids can't travel as much. But Do you have people from other provinces, or they would uh, be from the GTA normally? Uh, no, no. in fact, we have a, a large international student program altogether. So we have people from outside Ontario, from the U.S., from parts of Europe. Uh, and we're just starting to expand into the Far East, where sports is pretty major in many countries, including China. Well, and, uh, and to make sure that the kids, uh, we know that when the, it, to be able to succeed in sport, you have to travel, you have to compete, and, and games are played all over. Uh, how are you going to make sure that those kids will be able to keep their training, uh, doing the, uh, to do their training, at the same time, though, to make sure that the marks in school keep very high, otherwise their future is going to be affected negatively. Yeah. How do you do that? Yeah, no, absolutely. In fact, yeah, you, you pretty much define the sort of two key things that differentiates our school. Uh, first, we have a very, very flexible academic program that can travel with the kids. Mm -hmm. So when they go away to events, uh, it wouldn't be uncommon for them when they have their time at a hotel or in a conference room mm -hmm. at their venue that they can continue with school. They can do their assignments, they can study for tests, it's all online, it's all part of a technology that we've built for ourselves at the school that's very unique to the school. Um, the second is the in-class model 
um, accounts for the notion that the kids traveled. So when we set up our schedules for tests, when we set up our time for, for learning, we provide the kids lots of flexibility that accommodates their schedules. So if they do miss a Friday and a Monday because they're away at, at an event, uh, then they don't come back penalized as they might in some of the other school programs. And the teachers work with them. All of our teachers, or almost all of our teachers, are also former athletes. Mm -hmm. So they've come from the world a lot of these kids are trying to work their way into. So they know the flexibility that they need. Uh, the kids still have to do the work. They still have to demonstrate success. They still have to achieve marks uh, in order to succeed in our own school program and graduate. Um, but they're given lots of ways to allow that to happen over the 12 month period of the year to accommodate their sports schedules. Terrific. In hockey, you know, Canada is well known worldwide. Uh, uh, the Prime Minister made a few comments a few days ago, in fact. Uh, it's probably uh, the sport that most Canadians uh, are interested. Your kids, how are they doing uh, in, in the school? Uh, part. Uh, are their marks uh, as good as uh, how they play hockey or, or not? Well, and, or, and is it necessary to have that type of marks, uh, the A's? Yeah, so we, uh, one, of the, one of my jobs, one of my responsibilities is to make sure that their academics is being taken care of. Okay. Um, you know, we are an academic school first uh, model and, you know, they do do their sports every day as mm -hmm. well too, but um, one of the things we do have to make sure is they obtain the uh, proper, um, uh, sorry, proper academics mm -hmm. uh, to stay at that in their sport, and you know if they, if they don't, you know it's something that we would consider holding them back and make sure they get their extra work done before they go do their activities. Who do that? Uh, you you do the hockey. Other people do the uh, educational side. Do you have a person who is the troubleshooter who would? Uh, pull those kids who are not doing as well and give some ex extra attention. Absolutely, yeah. So within the academic staff, there's a whole support infrastructure for those kids and a guidance counseling process, those sorts of things. When we want to organize, let's say, a school event where we're going to send some athletes, then all the teachers participate in, in deciding whether this particular student can go or not go. That's really important to uh, the way we run the school. Terrific. Well, we had a, a good discussion about uh, uh, Everest uh, Academy. Uh, we are going to go shortly uh, and watch uh, some of the kids who attend Vaughan Secondary School. I want to hear what they have to say about their sport and academics, and then we'll come back and have more discussion on this. We will be back shortly. Thank you. Mr. Vaughan, I understand that uh, you are the gentleman that have been uh, mentoring many of our kids in the community, in particular those that attend one secondary school, they after school they come over here to extend their sport activities and their socializing and you are mostly responsible for that. What do you have to say to that? Um, you know what, I think it takes a lot of people to do it, not just myself, but when they come here we take care of the kids, basketball, um, we do like uh, mentoring with the kids, we also try to show them how to, you know, behave themselves, act properly. And as uh, students, as athletes, or as human beings? As human beings, you know, okay. and um, from we get them to the respect part of it, they were able to move on and everything else takes care of itself because um, when people respect you, they're willing to listen to you, right? So a lot of the kids that come here, when it comes to sports, it means so much to them. Everything is uh, basketball around here mm -hmm. and um, it's basketball, we could talk to them um, about certain things and we get to them with the basketball because a lot of them want to make the team. So mm -hmm. um, we tell them if you don't uh, you know, take care of the books and do what you have to do, you're not going to make certain teams because it goes hand in hand. Is it correct to say that most of the time spent here is with basketball or with any other sports which is competing? Um, most of the time it's basketball. The okay. kids here just, I don't know, they just love basketball mm -hmm. and um, I mean it's just um, from I've been working here, the kids just um, gravitate to it. They love it. Well, Vaughn Secondary, and not only is good in basketball, but also in hockey, in soccer, and other sports. Yes. Uh, so certainly, there is choices that they have. That's right. So basketball certainly seems to be the definite club in the center. Yes, it is. Okay. That's the one that they love. And, and kids normally get into trouble. Do they get into trouble here? No. You know what? 
uh, we we're, we're like uh, I, I say me and my coworkers we're like big parents. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we deal with things. Parents ask us a lot of times. Speak to my son because you know he's not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have no connection. I'm an outsider, so they think mom and dad. Oh, but you know what? Come talk to me. I'll tell you the same way. Same thing in a different way, but getting that point across. Let me correct one thing. Yeah, kids don't get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> one point zero 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 one percent get in trouble. Unfortunately, when, they, when one gets in trouble, then everybody yes. uh, seems to be. In fact, uh, it's, it's interesting, you know, we criticize, but quite frankly, hardly, hardly ever there seems to be a problem, but there shouldn't be any to start no, with. No. So the kids are good. Yes, they are. They act properly, and thanks to you, they even improve. Uh, once they go out from school and from their homes, yes. and they come here, you're another extension to their education uh, for them. So uh, thank you to you and the entire team for what you're doing for our community. And let's make sure that our kids will succeed in everything they want to. That's it. And thank you again. Thank, thank you very much. I'm here with Shane, who is going to go to the States. He's from Bond Secondary School. Why are you going uh, to the States, Shane? Well, this summer I'm going to the States just to get more um, recognition and exposure from college coaches so that maybe in the future I can um, take my talents to the U.S. so that um, college coaches know who I am, not mm -hmm. only in Canada, but throughout North America. So in those games in the States, there will be people watching for the best potential basketball player that they can offer a scholarship. Exactly. It's like the best of the best. If you're one of the best there, you can get a scholarship. If you're not, then like the chances are slimmer. Slimmer. In which cities are you going to go? I'm going to Daytona Beach in Florida. Any other cities? Um, we're also going to another tournament in Washington. Um, Atlanta, we're going like all over the U.S. And that is uh, what, a couple months, uh, July, August, is that? Uh... Um, it's start, it already started, it started like last weekend. You can go, last weekend I was in on... Um, so it's May, June, July, and August? May, June, July, August. Oh, so four months of activities all over the United States to show your talent, and you and your friends from the Bond Secondary School will be, some of you, will be participating. Exactly. Well, shame it's a golden opportunity I wish you the best. Thank you. Uh, play the best that you can, and hopefully you'll get a good scholarship so that you will be able to study the best university that we have in North America. And anything to say to your friends here? How can they get to do what you're doing? Um, for the people who want to try to um, get to the point that I'm, where I am right now, I, all I want to say is like, all you gotta do is work hard and like try your best whenever you do something. Because if you try your best and the harder you work, Maybe your goals, you can achieve your goals and your dreams. But never give up school. Never give up school. Because school is so important. Because without school, you're not going to get an academic scholarship. And without academic scholarship, you can't get like an athletic scholarship. Your future is future is. Well, that's wonderful stuff to say, Sham. I thank you for being with us. And we have spoken with Sham, one of our future champ. Thank you. And so you are one of those people today that is playing for the basketball yes. team. And uh, how many kids are part of your team? Well, we have uh, one junior, uh, one senior team, and two junior teams. Okay. So on one junior team, we have about 13 to 15 kids, and the other junior team, we have about the same. And on the senior team, they have 15 kids. And Bon Secondary, does it do anything else in addition to basketball? Where else do they uh, succeed in sports? Well, I know the girls' soccer team is doing pretty well this year, and also the, uh, the boys' soccer team was doing pretty well. But I think the girls' soccer team is probably doing the better one out of the both. Okay. And uh, what's going to happen uh, this summer with you? I understand you're traveling a lot this summer. Yes, I am. I'm traveling right now with uh, the team called S Elite, and we're going to about 10 tournaments in the States. And how many people from uh, Bon Secondary or in the area? participate in this event? Well, right now I have two of my friends that play with me on the same team. So there's two plus you, three, three of, and the, I, all the three of you are from Bond Secondary? Or? Yes. So three Bond Secondary students this summer are going to go to the States for the two, three months uh, summer uh, period, and you will be playing a number of games. Yes. And, and the other people are from the USA, from Canada, or from where? Well, the th the two other kids that are coming with me are like my friends that are playing on my team, but there are numbers of kids that my age that are going into the States too. Canadians? Yes, from one. And how many kids totally will be participating in all, you know, in all those teams? Uh, 
I, I couldn't even count, to be honest. But we're talking about the hundreds. Yes, there's actually there's and a so lot. Even if there's hundreds of people playing all these tournaments, three will be from the Mont Secondary School, uh, at least team. Uh, three are, are on my team, yes. But there are numbers of others that play for different teams. Terrific. And what is your name when you play basketball? My name is Freddy. So Freddy is the one on your shirt. On the back of my shirt, yes. Martello. Martello. So it's Freddy Martello. Yes. This guy will do very well in the future. Remember Freddy Martello from the region of York, a basketball player who will bring honor to this uh, region. Thank you very much for what you're doing. Make sure your grades will keep up very, very high yes. so that you'll do much better in the future, not only in sport, but in your future life. Thank you for coming here. Have a wonderful Thank day. You, you too. Okay, bye-bye. Now that we heard from a couple of the kids who are player, uh, let's talk uh, with the principal or the owner of the school or, and the coach uh, in hockey about their kids, your kids, the one that you're teaching. Uh, tell us uh, how well they are doing in, uh, you know, in hockey, uh, Jeff. You, you, you are in charge of that division. Uh, any good stories that you can share with us about our kids? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have, uh, we have a very good alumni. We have very good present kids that are there as well, too. One of our uh, alumni is playing in the NHL now, Anthony Duclair. Uh, we have some other players that are uh, pursuing their careers in the OHL, uh, Ben Jones and some other players as well, too. Uh, we also had one player in our current uh, school right now receive a scholarship to Boston University, uh, which he'll be attending uh, probably three to four years from now. Oh, and he already has a, a scholarship two years in advance. So he would be what, 15 and now, 16? He would be 15 years 15 old. 15 years old, wonderful. Yeah. So his, uh, his future should be wonderful unless something unusual would happen, I guess. Yeah, he has a very, very uh, bright yeah. future. And uh, wonderful. How about other uh, sports? Uh, let's talk about, uh, I don't know, basketball or... Uh, you said uh, there was uh, the number two... Lacrosse. Lacrosse. That's an interesting sport. Uh, very Canadian, I guess. Very but I, you don't see... I mean, at least I don't see much, but I know it's a Canadian sport. It's a very fast-growing sport, actually. Yeah. And one of the things that it offers, especially for females, mm -hmm. is an opportunity to use athletics to get more opportunities for education. Uh, so our program's about equal now between boys and girls in terms of lacrosse. We have a team for each, uh, each group. Uh, and it mostly travels through the U.S. because that's mm -hmm. where a lot of the competition is. And a lot of those students are setting their eyes on the U.S. college system, again, for scholarship opportunities, to get paid education, to go to American Division I to Division III schools. And in our case, almost all of our students succeed in that way and have had scholarships and have gone on to, uh, to university. How often uh, they get a scholarship from Canadian university? Well, on the athletic side, there's very little available in Canada. Okay. So the kids who are still pursuing athletics, if they want to use it as an opportunity to have other school choices, they almost have to look through the U.S. To the US. But in terms of students getting into Canadian universities, we have plenty uh, for Queens, Waterloo, mm -hmm. uh, McGill, uh, York, U of T. Uh, our students have gone on and graduated in other types of programs. Uh, music would be one example. Uh, fashion was another. Uh, we have students in computer science, uh, students in uh, math. Uh, who have gone on from our school to graduate that way. Wonderful. And, and I, I understand that, that the Americans tend to be much more aggressive in uh, uh, providing grants, but of course their education system is even more expensive. Yep. How is, are we as Canadian um, looking at the possibility of providing more uh, scholarship funding? Uh, do, do you know if anything is happening in our country or we just don't care and we don't mind if the kids go to study in the states? Uh, my impression of the national programs is they're increasingly concerned about how they can stop kids from going from Canada to the US to sort of mm -hmm. finish that last step of athletic success. Uh, we had some meetings recently with some of the national programs on the aquatic side, and that's a big concern that they have. That's they, an interesting sport. Uh, we could do very well in, in aquatics. Absolutely, absolutely. The, and it's not that expensive. I mean, we do have the facility. In your school, for instance, you've yeah, got an incredible the facility uh, there. aquatic. Uh, and not that far away, Mark, in the city of Markham, we, uh, there's a wonderful uh, swimming pool right. uh, that has been used. Uh, uh, so uh, do we have any of those students that stay in our university? Uh, uh, we do, it, it, but it depends on the sport. So a hockey player, as Jeff was saying, to be a professional will go the OHL route. 
and that pretty much starts to take them out of the school program uh, so that they could focus on trying to be a professional. Someone like lacrosse or baseball, golf, they, they need to get into the college university system somewhere in order to pursue that. You know, golf's a good example. You're better off in an in a all-year-round summer environment to get better at golf, but for other sports like lacrosse, you could do it indoors, uh, so it can be done in Canada. But the best coaches, to put it all together, which is what our program is about, to put it all together costs money, and that's a difficult thing for some of the bigger schools to do. Well, certainly we have the best among the best uh, golf uh, courses in, in Bonn, in Markham, yeah, and, and vicinity, Richmond Hill. Uh, but it's only during the summer. Yeah. Uh, and that's when the kids normally are not necessarily in school. So uh, there is an issue there. Uh, but uh, but our, uh, if, you, if you would uh, split you know, the number of grads uh, from your school, um, what, what is the number that stays in Canada, uh, university level or college level? And uh, those that go out of uh, uh, Canada, maybe Rosen. one quarter stay in Canada, stay in Canada. and, so and the ones who are pursuing athletics will tend to look at the U.S. Again, it depends by sport. Yeah, yeah. the hockey player stays in Canada, mm -hmm. the lacrosse player predominantly goes to the U.S. Okay, so it's about a quarter overall, and there is no nowhere else that it would go. It's either Canada or USA. Yeah, or we have uh, totally. those are the two correct. wonderful. And uh, are they A students, most of them, or generally speaking? I mean, uh, yeah. well, you know, university acceptance is university acceptance. So to get into the U.S. system, you have to write the SAT exams. You have minimal marks you have to achieve in order to get into the school programs. Uh, I, I don't know that our type of student would be any different than the, 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 the traditional averages you'd see at any other school. Our, our, our focus is on allowing them to achieve their maximum results. So if they are potentially an A student, they'll be an A student in our school. If the best they could be is a B student, we'll get them to at least be a B student mm -hmm. and help them overcome whatever challenges they may have to become a better student. But not everybody is meant to be an A student. It's, it's, yeah, of it's, course, and not everybody wants to go to university. Yes. Right, but if we develop the athletics, then they have more opportunity. Yes. And like, like the school we saw earlier, uh, if the kids have a chance to, just like they could be really good in math, if you could find that they're really good at basketball, hockey, mm -hmm. lacrosse, and develop that appropriately, uh, then you're giving them more chances, which is really what we're about. Wonderful. Any good story that you can tell us? Uh, you mentioned uh, one person minutes ago. Uh, any other good name locally that are doing very well or that will be doing very well yeah, tomorrow? We, uh, we recently had a player come back that uh, participated in the uh, under-18 um, for Canada, representing Canada, um, where he did quite well. Uh, he came back from the OHL and he's uh, finishing his schooling out uh, with us. Okay, and, he, and the name of the... Uh, Marcus Phillips. Phillips, wonderful. Well, any, uh, how about soccer? Do you have anyone in soccer? I know the females are doing very well in Canada, so we all know that. The boys are not doing as well. Right. Uh, any in your school, do you have that? We do. We have some soccer players. We're actually just about to expand that side of our program because it's uh, done... It's very strong in the community locally, um, so we're trying to build that out some more. We we have two or three kids who are uh, would look at soccer as their primary sport. We also use soccer as a cross training sport mm -hmm. for kids as well. So even the hockey players, we would encourage them to do soccer. Lacrosse players to do soccer because it's great for for foot training. There is lots of, of kids, uh, quite frankly, Absolutely. that we have in our community that are doing well, uh, and the schools are available for your kids. Uh, hopefully we will get as many as possible to join those schools and uh, we will have a, a more active and uh, more prosperous region. I thank you for participating, both uh, Stephen and jo uh, Jeff. Uh, thank you. We'll see you next uh, opportunity. Thank you. Have you. a wonderful day.